Welcome back to another edition of Timoteo TV preview of week six. And let me tell you, we have a great week. This may be the best week of football we will have all season. Um, so this is a week you do not want to miss. So um, before we get into it and break down each game, as usual, i got my man here, Buddy Martinez, coach of the Packers, guest expert Rodney Smith from uh, the Colts, and then, of course, Chris Lahr, as That's usual, on. from the Panthers. So, uh, yeah, so week six, every, every single game, great, great matchup. So let me prove it to you. Three o'clock. Let's get into it, guys. Here, Panthers, Ravens. This is huge. Panthers 4 and 1, Ravens 3 and 2. This is a fight for the Justice Division. This is really going to put, you know, if the Ravens win that the tiebreaker against the Panthers, Panthers win, they're sitting real nice in that division. What's going to happen, Chris? Here's the thing I love about about Team Mattel. Is is every year I remember the first week, it's like Christmas, right? It's like crazy like excitement. You just can't you've been waiting for all these months, finally it's here. Bang! Well, this is the reason why you're so excited. This week right here, this is Timoteo football at its greatest, right? Every game has meaning. Every game is going to be good. And, uh, and, and to kick it all off, the Panthers and Ravens is going to be powerful. Uh, we have, uh, like you said, the, the battle for the division. If the Panthers win this thing, there'll be two games, really three games up on the, uh, the Ravens and, and, and also the, above the cards, and they're looking good. Four is the magic number. So you, I think if you have four wins, you're going to get into grade eight. And so the Ravens are right there. They just need one more win. Will they get it this week? I don't know. A couple of things that are, that are interesting here is uh, um, the, the Panthers, who are really nobody's last year, and they are statistically up there in just about every category. And one of them is interceptions. Uh, George has eight interceptions. He's only two away from tying three from breaking the all-time interception records. Um, also in this game, on the, on the Ravens side, you have John Welsh who uh, has 36 receptions already. And uh, he needs uh, 28 receptions in three games to beat it. And that's less than 10 a game, and he gets the ball all day long. So we're looking at some records that might be just blown away this year. And uh, But for this game, it's going to be a powerhouse game. I think the Ravens had a strategy last week where they came out and looked crappy, right? They came out late in the day. They did it on purpose because they wanted the Panthers to sleep because they knew if they came into the game sleeping, then the Ravens could come in, beat them, and own the division. Ain't going to happen. Panthers are not going to sleep. They are not a team that sleeps, and they're going to beat the Ravens 26-18. to 18. All right, all right. Ryan, do you agree with Chris? Yeah, I actually do agree with Chris. I all think right. uh, I think our Burlack was going to have a, you know, a Timoteo field day with these guys. I mean, their defense is lack of communication, lack thereof. I mean, sort of kind of like, uh, you know, the Saints, they high-power offense, but no defense at all. But I think uh, Burlack is going to squeeze it out 35 to 30. I think that's what's going to happen. But I'm looking forward to him to tie that record again with the most touchdown passes in the game. All right. Buddy, what do you think? You think, one, is the Ravens even going to have a full team out there? And, and can, they, can they pull off a win? Yeah, I mean, when the Ravens, when they come with their full squad, I mean, they, 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 they're a much better team. What, what they, they gave us last week was – I guess just a sample of some of their players. I mean, if they can come this week with their full squad, and I know Dan is really hungry because he knows this is a chance for him to win the division. He needs to win this game. Um, then I think, yeah, they can compete uh, in this game. I mean, the Ravens, when, when they only uh, let their opponents score 24 points or less, they, they have won all their games. Uh, so if they can keep, you know, Burlacker in uh, a fantastic four over there, Calvin, Mike, George, and Jose – uh, under uh, under 24 points, then yeah, they have a really good shot of winning this game. But uh, but I'm not sure if they can do that. They haven't proved to me yet. I got the tie here in support for the Ravens, but I don't know if they're going to show up. And I got the Panthers pulling this out. Uh, I think they're going to continue to roll, and I got them winning 34 to 13. All right, Panthers across the board, then, right? Panthers wow, wow. All right, Panther Nation. We'll see. Baby. We'll see. Uh, next three o'clock game: 49ers, Raiders. 49ers, three and two. Kind of a team, you just don't know what you're going to get from week to week. I mean, one moment they look like contenders, next moment they look second class, you know. And then the Raiders, who 4-1 and one have just been, I'd say, just one of the most consistent teams this season. Mm -hmm. um, but with that, as we said, 49ers seem to play kind of the level of their competition. They may come out surprised. And what do you think, Chris? Yeah, the, the, the Raiders are a good team. And, and I, I've already talked to the coach a little bit. And they have Urban Bowl aspirations, right? These cats want to be in the Urban Bowl. And so these guys are, are going to keep trucking, keep rolling, and keep getting better. And I, and I like the, their coaching staff. And they're going to come ready 
to take this game. They're not sleeping on anybody here on out. And uh, the 49ers, on the other hand, they're three and two. They need one more win to get into the grade eight. Now, next week, they got the card. So in their minds, they might be thinking, hey, you know, we just win that and roll right in. They have some, They can be special if they win this week. Like, they're not just rolling into the grade eight. They're going to come in strong, have a high seed if they can beat the Raiders. Because if they beat the Raiders, they have the tiebreaker on them. And so they'll be lofted up there in second third place. And so uh, I think the 49ers don't just need to practice this week. They don't need to just go out on the fields and practice. They need to spend some time in the war room. They need to study tape, study what's going on to the Raiders, take the game to another level, and come out very strong, very intense. Um, but, but again, I, I just don't think they have it in them to go into the war room and, and take what's necessary. And I think the Raiders do. So the Raiders are going to edge this one out 20-18. to 18. All right. Rodney, what do you think? You going to go along with that one also? Yeah, I, I actually have to agree with Chris. Uh, man. Thank you. I like you. Man, the, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, last week uh, the Raiders just just dominated what was what to be our, our high-flying offense from the Colts, which I coach. Um, and, they, you know, they held us to, what, seven points. And like, as I said, this is going to be a strong defensive game between the 49ers and the Raiders. I got the Raiders pulling out 17-10. to 10. All right. Buddy, all right, we're talking about all these great games and you know, these battles. Are you just we're going to have another sweep here of picks? Is it really not that big of a – these matchups aren't that great? Or? Well, well, this is a huge game here because if the 49ers want to consider themselves a contender, they have to be able to win this game. They have two losses this year by a margin of only three points. I think they lost uh, their first game by two points to the Colts, uh, and then they lost to the Packers by like one point or something like that. So, uh, so, so the 49ers have been in every game this year. Uh, now the Raiders, they have the stingiest defense in the league. Uh, they have, uh, if they, opponents only score 19 points, they are undefeated. They've won every single one of them games. And they're also, since they made the switch with Josh at quarterback, as I mentioned each week, just kind of been on a roll. Uh, they live in and die by their defense over there. They added a couple players. They have Jeff Sampson now who's been balling. And then they also, Mo Vegas made a comeback. So, so those might be some pieces that might help them get down, uh, you know, deep into the, the playoffs. But with the 49ers, I mean, they got Freddie, who, who's the sack master right now. He's just sacking everything in the site. He has 17 already, you know, very close to the record. And then you have David, who has 171 catches, who's also close to Misael's 185 catch record. So all he needs is 15 to break it in three games. Now, what the 49ers are going to have to decide is whether – they're about records or about winning games. Mm -hmm. so, so the records are going to come if they can focus and come together as a team and beat the Raiders. I, th I think they're a scary team down the road. They can catch fire. And I believe, I, I think that's what they're going to do this week. They're going to bounce back, uh, and they're going to beat a contender. And I got them winning uh, this game 21-19. to All right, all right. A little controversy there. There we go. Um, last game for this segment here. Mm -hmm. Special game, 430, Lions-Jets. 0-5, oh, both teams. Someone is going to walk out of next week with their first victory. It's mm. going to happen for somebody. Who's it going to be, Chris? I'll tell you, I'm excited about this game. This game is the Donut Bowl. I think both teams should bring a dozen donuts. And the loser of this game gets to eat the donuts. Right? And so they're going to have a donut and they're going to keep a donut. And, and this is both teams. I think both teams need to, to study the Panthers a little bit. Because the Panthers... Up to this year, had four seasons, had only won three games. And they never quit. They keep coming back. They keep coming back. And they're building. And then finally, they're at a point where they, they built something. They haven't given up. Both these teams are going to have to be like that. Both these teams are going to have to work through some, some adversity in the first few years. But if they do, the time will come. will be their time to rise. And so I, need, I think both of them need to begin looking at the league, put some puzzle pieces together, and then see how they come together. Um, I think um, this week, it's going to be an exciting game because, you know what, neither team realizes you have to play defense. And so I think what's going to happen is the Jets are going to win 133 to 131. It's going to be a close one. Yeah. All right. No defense, baby. Roger, what do you think? Uh, well, I got the, uh, the Lions winning this one, mm. getting their first win. Right. Uh, just, just on behind uh, player number 22. I don't know his name, but he's an awesome player, plays with a lot of art. Man. And – Oh, okay. His name is Manny. Thank you, buddy. You're a great guy. Mm -hmm. um, he just plays with a lot of heart. I mean, he's flying up and down the field, telling his players to go this way, go that way, grab flags, uh, 
jump balls. Like he's just he's just everywhere. And the Jets, oh man, I, I can say no more about the Jets. When they want to have practice, their coach doesn't want to have practice. When they're out doing this, the coach doesn't want to do this. Or it's just a whole bunch of just monstrosity of, of conflict problems that's happening in the Jets uh, organization right now. And they're not gelled together as one whole team. So, as I said, I got the Lions pulling away, getting their first win, 32-20. All right, buddy, break this tie for us here. What's going to happen? Well, in this game here, I mean, it's going to be which which players don't decide to quit here. You know what I mean? These players have to man up. One of these teams might not get a win this year, but you got to finish it out. You got to, you know, you set mm-hmm. your mind to start this season. You got to finish this season out. Don't be a girl and quit. Sorry, ladies. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, I mean, in this game, I'm going to go with the Lions. I got them winning 26-25. I think both these teams have players, and it's going to come down to who makes the least amount of mistakes. And I think the Jets are very uh, mistake-prone, so I'm going to go with the Lions 26-25. All right. We'll have to see what happens out on the field. So uh, thanks for joining us for this first segment, and uh, we'll be back in just a little bit.